While doing my weekly retro reviews, I noticed that I primarily focused on mostly underrated films that I wished had a bigger audience. So I felt compelled to add an under the radar segment where I discuss underrated movies and tell my faithful to give these films a spin. I had a lot of feedback on my video about 2012's The Great, some positive, some negative reactions to that film, but I'm glad so many of you gave the movie a watch. If you like the content I'm getting out, you can always do the thing. You know, the thing. Like, share, subscribe. That thing. Anyway, this brings me to the newest segment on this dumb channel, Under the Radar Recommendations. On this week's episode, I want to discuss a stellar film that has a title that sounds like it could have been a Steven Seagal reality series in the early aughts. This is, however, a movie that takes place in the MCU. No, that's not right. It does star two Avengers, however. When discussing marketing for this movie, I wondered if they ever considered selling this as a Hawkeye and Scarlet Witch movie. At the very least, far more people would have heard of this film. This is, however, a part of a cinematic universe, the Sheridanverse. Is that a thing? I don't know. Taylor Sheridan is a guy who seems interested in putting out compelling content with interesting stories. Look, if you liked Hell or High Water, Sicario, Yellowstone, or The Mayor of Kingstown, you'll absolutely love this movie. I'll be sure not to spoil it too much for those who've yet to watch this, but this should be your next watch for movie night if you have it. Enter Wind River. It's a terrific, harrowing, and compelling modern western that's so good I wanted to watch it again the second it was over. This is one of those rare movies that I wished was longer, or at least had a sequel to continue seeing the aftermath of everything that occurred in this film. Either way, I was so invested in what happened that I almost felt robbed that there wasn't more of it to consume. So let's discuss the nitty gritty. What's Wind River about? Well, the film follows the story of Corey Lambert, who's played by Jeremy Renner. He's a U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service tracker and Jane Banner, played by Elizabeth Olsen. She's an FBI agent as they investigate the murder of a young Native American woman on the Wind River Indian Reservation in Wyoming. The film begins with a haunting scene of a young Native American woman, Natalie Hansen, running barefoot through the snow, clearly terrified and in pain. The narrative then shifts to Corey, who, while on duty to eliminate predatory animals, discovers Natalie's frozen body in the middle of nowhere with signs of sexual assault and head trauma. The case is then classified as a homicide, and FBI agent Jane Banner is sent to investigate. She's unprepared for the brutal winter conditions and enlists Corey's help due to his tracking skills and knowledge of the area. As they delve into the investigation, they face the challenges of the unforgiving environment and the jurisdictional complications of law enforcement on tribal lands. They interview Natalie's family and friends to piece together her last days. The investigation reveals the lawlessness and vulnerability of the community, especially for the women. As Corey and Jane get closer to the truth, the tension escalates and they find themselves confronting not only the elements, but also the darker aspects of human nature. Corey's also grappling with personal grief as this case brings up painful memories of his daughter's unresolved death, adding another layer of conflict to the narrative. The entire third act is incredibly gripping, heartbreaking, and all around a great watch. It's impossible to look away from what's happening. Now, without revealing spoilers, the final act leads to a confrontation that brings the central mystery to a head. The characters are pushed to their limits and the case's resolution comes at a significant personal cost. The film concludes with a reflection on the broader issues it raises, leaving the audience with a point message about the often overlooked struggles of life on the reservation, particularly for Native American women. Apparently this aspect stuck out to Sheridan when writing the movie, so he decided to incorporate that into the latter part of the film. Sheridan's an actor turned writer-director, so he has a way of getting terrific performances from his cast, and this movie's no exception. This was Sheridan's third film as a writer and second as director. The previous two films that he wrote were Sicario and Hell or High Water, and he considers Wind River to be the third entry in a thematic trilogy he calls the American Frontier trilogy. So apparently during the shoot, Sheridan was visited on set by some local tribal leaders who revealed to him that there were 12 unsolved murders of young women on a reservation of about 6,000 people. Due to a 1978 landmark government ruling, the Supreme Court stripped tribes of the right to arrest and prosecute non-natives who commit crimes on native land. If neither the victim nor the perpetrator is native, the county or state officer must make the arrest. If the perpetrator is non-native and the victim an enrolled member, only a federally certified agent has that right. If the opposite is true, a tribal officer can make the arrest, but the case must still go to federal court. This dilemma creates a jurisdictional nightmare by choking up the legal process on reservations to such a degree that many criminals go unpunished indefinitely for severe crimes. This is why the ending is the way it is. Again, no spoilers. Now let's talk about those performances. The performances in this movie are outstanding. If you look close enough, you'll see some of Sheridan's regulars, including Jeremy Renner himself himself, who's become one by starring in Mayor of Kingstown. That show gets shit on by the corporate media, but it's an excellent watch if you haven't checked it out yet. Anyway, Renner is the standout in this film by playing a badass hunter tracker, but also as 
as a single dad who's clearly struggling to get through each day mourning the loss of his daughter. Totally relatable. I've always thought Elizabeth Olsen had some serious acting chops, but she wasn't really given roles to showcase those. But in this movie, we get to see it in all its glory. Hey, Hollywood. Notice how she's a badass woman who doesn't take every free moment she has on the screen to shit all over men? What's up with that? Her character is the badass chick we need but don't deserve, and Olsen gives one of her better performances in her entire career. And what's great about Sheridan as a writer is the hyperbolic realism he brings to his stories and the way you're just sucked into the events unfolding. Wind River doesn't waste any time, there isn't a boring section, and it's perfectly paced. Wind River received an eight-minute standing ovation at the Cannes Film Festival when it debuted and while Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny received a similar response, let's face it, that was more out of respect for Harrison Ford and the almost 50 years he'd given to that character. While this film came out when Sheridan was still an under-the-radar up-and-comer, the movie does have a tremendous buildup and intrigue with the who done it mystery as the central theme, but I must say the payoff is highly satisfying. The violence in this movie, I guess the best way to describe it is over the top realism. There are a few scenes that will have you saying, oh shit, it's intense and well done. All in all, Wind River is just a terrific film. I also consider Sicario and Hell or High Water excellent films, so this is one of the best thematic trilogies ever made. While some of Sheridan's content is considered, I guess, controversial in the quality department, and I really don't understand why. I don't know, maybe I'm just a meathead, but what I do know and understand our movies. And Sheridan's master strength is telling intriguing stories while writing terrific dialogue, providing nuance, and developing his characters. At the very least, I think he's able to breathe life into his characters and make them relatable. And thus, he tells stories that people like investing their time in. While he has a short film resume, I must say, Wind River may be his magnum opus. Have you seen Wind River? If you have, comment below and let me know your thoughts. If you haven't, why not binge this thematic trilogy and let me know what you think? Sometimes my recommendations aren't everyone's cup, but that's what I'm here for, so let me know. If you liked what you saw, please do the thing. Like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, run around the house naked. If you didn't like what you watched, then hey, I thank you very much for watching this far. As always, the opinions in this video are mine and mine alone, but what do I know? I'm but a mere jackass. I'll try to do better next time. Catch you later, friends. Oh, big golf, huh? All right. Well, see you later. <laughs>